All right. So welcome to juniors and rising seniors more um, appropriately. It's kind of strange to think how fast and slow this year goes by at the same time. But um, I'm one of the school counselors. I'm Mr. Johnson. Um, there are eight different school counselors between all of you. And we're all splitting up to do um, ninth through 12th grade registration. So we're excited to talk to you about this. And again, I am recording this presentation so you can always go back um, to rewatch anything that you feel like you may have missed. Um, to start off, registration officially starts today. So February 4th, and it goes until February 17th. So the deadline, the due date is the 17th. Now, the one thing I'll say is just because it's due in the 17th doesn't mean you can't get it done earlier. Um, you know, so I do encourage you to be proactive in this, start those conversations at home, or if you need to connect with your counselor. Uh, but the due date is the 17th. And, uh, you know, high fives all around if you want to do that sooner than that. So with distance learning, um, registration looks slightly different. Um, specifically, I want to talk about two resources for you that are going to be important for registration. The first one is um, we used to be very paper based, you know, as far as the registration materials, but now we're more digitally based. So we tried to make the course catalog very friendly for you to get the information about um, what courses are available, pathways, graduation requirements, descriptions, prerequisites, all of that. So we have created a course website. Um, it's very easy to navigate. Um, I'm hoping that you find it um, much smoother to work through as well versus paging through something or scrolling through a PDF. So here it is. It contains all the same information your course catalog typically would. Um, what makes it, I think, a little slicker is you can select the credit categories, the subject areas you want right away. So, for example, maybe you're curious about science. You head to the science tab. You get that general information about our science sequence. And like every core subject area, there are going to be defined pathways that they show you. So essentially, ninth through 12th grade, along with prerequisites. And then if you scroll down more, you get to find information about the courses. You know, the cool thing is, as rising seniors, you're going to have more opportunity than ever to take courses that interest you and that align with your goals. So I encourage you to explore this. Look at the courses, read the descriptions see how long they are, semester courses versus year-long courses. But this is a great tool for you. Um, also, I think oftentimes senior year, it's like, ah, oh, I wanna take a course I've never tried before, but I wanna know more than just the description. Many of our courses too, we're starting to put informational videos out for you. So for example, maybe you're like, what really is aerospace engineering or civil engineering and architecture? We have a video that talks about what this course is for you. So not every course has this, but um, a lot of them are starting to populate with this. So it's just a great resource to go to to learn a little bit more around that. So heading back to the PowerPoint, um, the other resource I really want to talk about is Schoology. So we're trying to push all the information where everything already exists for you, not create something else you have to go to. So in your grade level Schoology page, so that 11th grade page, you have a folder labeled 2021-22 school year registration. All right, so I'm gonna quickly just go to that to walk you through this because we're hoping this, be, this becomes your one-stop shop for registration information. You don't have to navigate too many websites or too many resources. So in this folder, we have broken down the registration process into a few different steps if you kind of want to pace yourself for that. And obviously it all starts today um, and for you in this 11th grade biology course. Um, each step does relate to a resource down here. So if you're curious about your graduation requirements and want to look at that graduation checklist sheet, um, we have that linked for you. And a very small bonus of um, you can digitally manipulate it now. So instead of having to print it off and check it off, um, you are able to just mark off the boxes as well. So I think especially as a rising senior, this is important that you refer to. You know, this is not just about, this is about graduating high school and about um, kind of future goals beyond that. So understanding uh, what you need to take is a very important step. Uh, we also have our links. So essentially, if you want to connect with me, if you're one of my students, if you want to connect with a different counselor who you're assigned to, you can go to these um, scheduling links. You select your counselor. So in this case, you know, if you're one of my students, Mr. Johnson, and you look at any of these times that are available. So the bolded dates are the ones that are available, right? So, you know, maybe you're looking, okay, tomorrow, what's my availability? Well, I have three open meetings that you could do tomorrow already. Otherwise, maybe you look at next week. And essentially what you're gonna do is just select a time, hit continue, fill in your name, 
your email and answer these two questions. Done. Then what we'll do as counselors is we'll send you that virtual meet, um, usually within 24 to 48 hours of the meeting for you to attend. So I'm hoping that makes sense. And you know, it's very easy to connect with your counselor if you need to have those conversations about registration. Um, we do have some great information too on uh, PSEO and NCAA requirements. And most recently, I'm not sure if you caught this, I believe Mr. Hackbarth posted it on Schoology, but we do have info, um, some good interviews and some information on PSEO embedded in here, as well as NCAA requirements. So if you're a student who's thinking about D1, D2 athletics, if you're a student who's thinking about taking courses at Normandale or the U of M, we have some great information. And again, it's all in this um, Schoology folder here. So I'm gonna head back to the presentation now, and I'm gonna probably refer to this um, often, just to kind of remind you it's a great resource to use and hoping that you do take advantage of it. All right, so um, I'm gonna start this whole thing off with choose wisely. The courses that you select determine what we run as a high school. So we don't just say, yeah, we're gonna run four sections of AP Psych. No, we wait to see what you register for. The reason I point that out is because if you don't register for a course, there's not gonna be space for you to take it next year. You know, if you're debating between maybe a different level class or which class would be best fit for you, your teachers are often great um, experts in their own content area. So for example, if you're trying to think, hmm, would AP Bio be a good fit for me? I'm trying to decide between comparative anatomy and human anatomy. Your science teachers might be able to help you guide that process based upon the knowledge of them having you this semester, this year. Also, keep balance in mind. Um, as rising seniors, you are going to have additional commitments and responsibilities when you think about the application process and what comes with senior year. So keep that balance in mind. We often encourage you to um, have this conversation at home because I think the people at home can remind you of what your commitments and responsibilities look like semester to semester. So what I'm going to do is for the next about 10 minutes, I'm going to talk about the what for registration. So the actual content, what do I need to register for, for both the high school graduation requirements and a little bit of four-year college advice along the way. The second part is going to get into the how you register. So actually using the academic planner. So we're going to start out with a what. And the what starts with the graduation requirements. All students need a total of 43 credits for graduation. Now, if you ever have logged into your student portal and gone to Infinite Campus, you can pull up your transcript, and on your transcript, it shows your total credit count. Um, I would say that, you know, the typical junior um, entered their year with probably around 24 credits, you know, so above pace, you know, for that 43. But within that 43, you have specific credit requirements, all right? So we're going to get into each of these categories right now to make sure that you're setting yourself up. Um, for a successful senior year. Before I do that, though, I want to talk about one big change, and that is Edina High School is looking to offer you the opportunity to take online co courses through EHS. Um, the courses that we're offering are all outlined on the course website, okay? Um, what I'd say is typically um, most, if not all, graduation requirements are offered um, online, but like any other course, it depends on how many students register for it, all right? So you can register for a full year of that online course or just a semester. Um, in theory, you can kind of tailor this, tailor this to you however you um, best fits you. Now, if you're wondering if an online class is appropriate, I guess the simplest question to ask yourself is how has distance learning gone in this online model? If it's been successful for you, if it's found good life balance, if it's something that just naturally works with how you learn, then that might be something to consider. On the other hand, if distance learning has been a struggle, if you've missed the in-person learning, the opportunity to be more hands-on with your work, then I would maybe question if online is the best choice for that. Um, each course will have online in the title when you register, if that's what you want. So for example, there'll be one class that's labeled um, pre-calculus and one class that's labeled online pre-calculus. And again, these are semester choices. And we'll get more into the how you register in a couple minutes. So um, English is the first category we're gonna talk about. And it's probably the first time you actually have truly big options to choose from. You know, in ninth grade, it was pre-AP9 and 10th grade it was pre-AP10. This year, it was US Lit or APOL. Next year, 
you need to take a semester English course from each of these categories, one from group A and one from group B. I also want to um, note that um, not all of these courses are NCAA approved. So if you're a potential D1, D2 athlete, um, your English courses do need to be NCAA approved. You need four years of an approved um, English courses. So um, these asterisks next to these courses do denote which ones are NCAA approved. So for a typical senior, you're going to be choosing a semester of A, a semester of B. That could be world lit and public speaking. That could be creative writing and mass media. AP world lit is a full year course. So that's the only exception to this. If you take AP World Literature and Language, that is a full year course. The rest are semesters. I also just want to quick point out that in order to take Film and Lit 2, you need to take Film and Lit 1. OK, um, that's not true for World Lit 1 or 2. Those are independent semesters. But Film and Lit 2 does require Film and Lit 1. So moving on from English, uh, social studies. You know, the typical sequence is going to be government in ninth grade, um, one of these history, world history classes in 10th grade, and then most of you are in U.S. or APUSH right now. Um, some juniors might also have doubled up along the way and taken economics, but most of you are probably looking at taking economics as a senior, and this is a graduation requirement. So you have two options. The first one is a semester of our traditional economics course. The second one is our full year AP economics course. All right, so um, make sure you have economics in your four year plan because you will need that for graduation. And remember, AP econ is a full year, traditional econ is one semester. Math sequence is a little bit more unique. And part of this is because, um, you know, all of you have found strengths in your learning and your subject areas along the way. and Probably if I polled the class, we'd probably have students in at least four or five different math classes right now. So the important thing is to continue your math sequence. Um, in general, there's probably a pretty good chunk of you that are in FST right now. For those of you in FST, you might be looking at three different options. College algebra prep, college algebra, pre-calculus, right? Remember, our course website has the math sequences in them, and it talks about each of the math courses as well. If you're not sure, your math teacher is the person you should start this conversation with. If you're wondering how this maybe impacts college admissions or if this fits your plan, that's when I want you to come to your counselor with that question. But if it's just about what's the best math step next and what level is appropriate, your math teacher and looking at those sequences on the course website are your best next step. Rounding out the four core subject areas is science. So most of you took physics in ninth grade, chemistry in 10th grade, um, and are taking a version of biology right now as an 11th grader. So you need three years of science to meet high school graduation requirements. When it comes to college admissions, um, three or four years is typically what they want. We often say three plus years of science. Whenever you go above and beyond in a core subject area, that's one way you can show rigor. I think too often we get caught up by thinking, oh, AP or enriched is the only way I can show rigor. That's not true. You know, taking additional years in a course subject area is a way that you can show rigor as well. The fun part about science as a senior, I think, is you have semester courses to choose from. Classes like physical universe, comparative anatomy, human anatomy, organic chemistry, forensics, and so on. Your science teachers are also going to be great people to speak to what those look like. And if you're considering maybe um, doing an AP class, what that expectation looks like. Um, you know, remember, our AP science courses are a mixture of rewarding and challenging, right? They are college level classes. All right, as far as graduation requirements, health and PE. I think as a senior, sometimes, you know, you maybe you, you pushed it off, right, to senior year. So we have to make sure that you've gotten these done if you haven't already. Um, the first one is one credit of health, right? Simple as that. Um, for next year, you could choose health or you could choose online health, potentially as your option. For your um, wellness credit, you have two credits. The first one has to be personal wellness. The second wellness credit, there are a bunch of classes to choose from, and you can see them right over here in this right column. You know, uh, blended guided wellness, soccer theory, basketball theory, strength and conditioning, unified PE, etc. We do have um, an online class for each of these credits, right? So for the health, for the personal wellness, and the wellness credit. 
So make sure to identify those when you register for how you want them. Remember, you do need two total PE credits, one being personal wellness and one being a general wellness credit. Rounding off kind of these graduation requirements, we're gonna finish with fine arts. Um, you need two total fine arts credits. For those of you that are in like band, choir, orchestra, um, that, that's naturally happened then. That, those are fine art credits. Some students might be taking fine art classes like um, photography, digital photo, drawing and painting, ceramics. We also have classes like interior design um, and civil engineering and architecture that meet those requirements. Again, our course website will outline um, all these courses and the graduation requirements they meet as well. Every department also is going to offer electives. And again, as a senior, more than ever, this is going to be what you're probably going to be looking at. Um, in the past, a lot of your years have been a little bit more prescriptive, like what you need to take. Uh, senior year is wide open. There is no specific um, science requirement. There is no specific you know, social studies requirement besides maybe econ. Um, you maybe are going to continue a world language, or maybe you're going to have more openings for electives because you've already done health, you've already done gym, and you just have all these open spaces. So check out the electives in these, um, in these different subject areas. And I mentioned world language. World language is not a high school graduation requirement but it can often be found as a college admissions requirement. Many colleges like to see a total of two, or two to four years in the same language for admission. Again, what's a way you can show rigor? Continue on, you know, maybe you're, maybe you're in Spanish two or Spanish three, you're in a really good spot. Do you wanna do Spanish four or Spanish five next year? Wow, even better, right? It's a good, better, best scenario. Maybe you love language. If you wanna add a, a second world language, you know, hey, we encourage you to do that. When you forecast ahead for next year world language, um, you know, talk to your world language teacher. I think in general this year has presented unique learning um, environments. So if you're unsure about it, talk to your world language teacher. Historically, we've said if you score below 75%, consider retaking the language just because world language really builds upon itself. And when you find um, gaps in your foundation, it typically makes the next year a little harder. So quick reference, you can kind of find where you are on the screen. So if you're in a level three class, you'll sign up for level four. Sometimes you'll have a choice between an honors and a regular course. If you're in level four right now, um, you know, if you're in an honors course, maybe you're looking for that AP or maybe you're in regular. You have that conversation with your Spanish teacher about what does enriched Spanish four versus or Spanish five versus AP Spanish look like. All right. This really has to be about your goals and about your balance. Um, new courses are on the course website. I uh, just want to do a quick shout out. We we have some great courses like Theater for All, Unified PE, and one of the new ones we're going to start offering next year is a Unified Foods class as well. So check out the course description on there if you want to learn more about that new course. The biggest difference between past year's registering and this year registering is going to be keeping your goals in mind. Right. Um, students are going to look at two year schools, four year schools, gap year programs, technical colleges. You know, make your senior year be about your path. In general, four year colleges typically want four years of English, four years of math, three plus years of science, a minimum of three years of social studies, two plus years of the same world language and fine arts. All right. Now, I think for the majority of you, you you've been on this path naturally. Right. This has kind of guided you here naturally. So keep this in mind when you're registering. Um, if you have specific interest areas, uh, future careers in mind, even majors that you've been wondering about, keep those in mind as you're choosing the classes. This is really about serving you. In, in many ways, this is the beginning of your college application because colleges will look at your senior classes, what you're taking, both in kind of what you're choosing, the rigor overall, and then eventually your grades in those classes. Two biggest things you can do to help yourself out, um, no matter who you are when it comes to college admissions. Focus on school and your grades and be intentional with the courses you choose. If you can do those things well, you're going to set yourself up really well. Um, some of you might consider PSEO, so actually taking courses at a college like Normandale or the U of M. I want to make a couple important notes. First of all, for registration, you are still going to register as if you are a full-time high school student. Then, when the applications come out for your PSEO programs, you will apply there. 
If you accept enrollment there and register, you will then meet with your school counselor and we will adjust your high school registration to meet what you're doing for PSEO, whether that's part-time or full-time. If you have specific questions about PSEO, um, one, your counselors are available. So you can use that link I showed you at the beginning. Two, um, our counseling website does have something specific on PSEO. So if you're kind of wondering what are the most common places that students go for post-secondary enrollment, if you want links to forms, scrolling down, not trying to make anybody dizzy here. Um, we have stuff on the University of Minnesota Twin Cities. I'm gonna scroll down again. Um, we have information about Normandale Community College and so on. Um, for Normandale, for example, um, they're typically looking for a rising senior who has a 2.5 GPA or higher, um, and they have all their eligibility information on this site. So again, our student services website has a PSEO tab as well as a registration tab for you to, to find out more information if that's something you're interested in. All right, getting back to the PowerPoint. Um, HTC is also another opportunity, Hennepin Technical College. Now these are high school credits, not college credits, but they provide a really great opportunity for hands-on work. Um, we, ha we have courses that are um, like auto body, um, law enforcement, culinary arts, nursing assistant, um, some really popular classes that are very hands-on. Now, what you have to realize for HTC is a couple things. One, we only provide transportation if you're taking the noon classes. Two, they take up three periods of your day typically. All right, so that means you'd be taking at most four high school classes and then your HTC course. The other important part is there's actually an enrollment form you have to fill out and it's on your grades, your grade level school G page, that form. So you would complete that and turn that in by the 19th. Um, the way HTC works is it's really on a rolling basis. So the sooner you turn in that application, the better chance you have at getting accepted. Um, once it fills up, it fills up. Again, we offer 13 different courses and they have a wide range. Um, auto body repair technology, culinary arts on this page is some of the most popular classes I've seen over the years here. Um, in addition, that nursing assistant is probably the most popular class because of the opportunities it gives you um, to set up for the state nursing um, assistant competency, competency exam. And then um, law enforcement is also a very popular course. Um, I'm going to put a plug in again for NCAA eligibility just because this is the year that is going to be the most easy to make a mistake. So if you're an aspiring D1, D2 athlete, make sure you are um, following those NCAA eligibility guidelines. Um, you can always go to the NCAA website. Um, our school code is 240708 um, and all these hyperlinks will work so you can always use these later on. Remember, the school Schoology site has that presentation on NCAA athletics too. All right, I'm giving you a lot of information. I'm hoping it's not too much. We're going to part two of the presentation, which is the how do I register? We just did the what, talked about graduation requirements, talked about a little bit of post-secondary planning. Your academic planner is on your student portal through Infinite Campus, all right? There is no paper registration. This is purely online registration. This is only accessible through your student portal, not through a parent portal. Okay, so this is your responsibility as rising seniors to do. So when you log into Infinite Campus, you're going to select your academic planner. Okay, just like it shows here on the screen. From there, you'll get um, a quick academic plan screen. This has no implications. If you want to play with the drop down boxes, go for it. But all you need to do is hit next. Okay, there is no implications to any of these drop down boxes. It's just a data reference tool. So I would just hit next, hit proceed to go to the next screen. And hopefully this is a familiar site for you. Um, this is your academic plan and this is how you register. A quick reminder is that from left to right in the vertical columns are your grade levels, grade nine, 10, and 11. You'll notice that these are all shaded in. You cannot change those. Those are things that you've either accomplished or are in progress doing. So your senior year column is where your registration will be. You should have some classes already in there, because whenever you save your academic plan, it has to be a four-year plan. On the top here, next to your grade level, you see how many credits you're enrolled in. This number should be 12, excuse me. So you need at least 12 total credits, but you need seven courses in each semester or seven period day. So what's the reason we'd have maybe 12 credits instead of 14? Student prep. 
right? You have the opportunity to take a student prep each semester, right? A student prep is not a credit bearing course. So if you took a semester one and a semester two student prep, you'd have a total of 12 credits, six each semester. So your responsibility right now is going to be to go through each subject area. And remember, they're labeled English, social studies, math. And as you scroll down, you'll see the electives, health, PE, etc. to make sure that you're meeting graduation requirements and that you're registering for a full um, load senior year that reflects your plan. This save button is the most overlooked button. I know it sounds really simple, but you do have to save your plan. Otherwise, it doesn't get pulled in for registration and you won't have the classes you want. Um, I mentioned earlier that online courses are gonna be offered. Um, just check out this example. You see how it says online geometry, online intermediate algebra, online pre-calc. Be intentional with how you're registering. And remember, semester to semester, you can make these choices. You could do semester one, online geometry, semester two, geometry. This is up to you. Courses only run if enough students register for them. So quick refresher for how to search courses, how to add them to your plan. Two options. One, you click the credit box and you either can start typing or you can just scroll through and select the courses. Option two, use the search course catalog button. I would say if you know the course you're registering for, use the credit box, type it in, it's much faster. If you're still in that exploring stage, wanna learn a little bit about classes, um, the course catalog would serve you better because when you search a course, it pops up the display at the prerequisites, the course description, and it can let you add the course from there. Okay, most common issue is right here. Maybe some of you remember this, maybe some of you don't. When you press save, you need to make sure it actually saved. So in this dialog box that popped up here, it says course plan was not saved. So just because something pops up, it doesn't mean your plan has saved. Here it says, okay, the reason it wasn't saved, not enough credits um, selected in language arts. If we look over here in the plan, you'll see I only have one English class. At the beginning of the presentation, we talked about English. You need one from English 12A and one from English 12B. What I would need to do is go back, I'd hit OK, and add the English 12B class in here. You'll also see that I didn't do enough alternate courses. I'm doing this purposely because these are the two most common mistakes that we've found with rising seniors. Right? So your class is the one that's going to rock this. You're going to do better than any rising senior class before, but I want to outline this. Okay. Make sure you resolve any issues that come up. Your plan does not save until it says course plan was saved. You can save as many times as you want. So between now and the 17th at 4 p.m., you can save as many times as you want. But on February 17th at 4 p.m., this will be turned off and you can no longer change your academic plan. So again, you have the better part of two weeks to do this. Get on it right now. No reason you have to wait. Okay, senior year registration. Choose your courses based upon your goals, okay? If you have a specific um, interest areas, uh, you maybe you're interested in certain careers, even maybe you're thinking about college majors. There's no reason you have to, but maybe you are. Make your goals personal to your plans. Remember semester one of your senior year often involves college applications, essays, extracurriculars, and hopefully those great senior opportunities and traditions that would happen in a normal year. Make a balanced schedule. Quick data point is about three quarters of students each year apply to colleges by mid-November. So you are looking at added responsibility that first semester. So do consider how student prep could help you balance that. If you're an NCAA athlete, check your eligibility requirements. When registering, you have to make sure you're registering for seven classes each semester. Okay, remember the course numbers end in either S1 or S2, reflecting semester one or semester two. Typically, this isn't that big of an issue, right? You're doing full year classes. As a senior, you're probably gonna be looking at more semester classes, and this is something that can accidentally happen a lot easier. Second thing I wanna point out is this. Um, you can only have one student prep each semester. You do not register for TA, and you do not register for peer tutor. Those are applications that will come out in the future. If you want to do peer tutor or TA, um, what we would end up doing is dropping one of your seven classes you registered for. So you could register for seven credits, 
and we drop one of those credits for TA or peer tutor once that application goes through. Maybe you register for a student prep, but you want to drop that for your TA or peer tutor. That's fine. But you cannot register for TA or, t or peer tutor. That is a later on process. Remember to click save. I know it sounds simple, but I need to keep saying that. Um, the courses we are offered are determined by what students sign up for, so please be intentional here. Be sure to indicate at least two alternate courses for each semester. Again, as a senior, you're going to have more opportunity than you've ever had before. Um, and with that, we want to make sure that we're giving you the best options possible related to your plan. If for some reason one of your electives didn't work and you didn't put an alternate, you're making your counselor guess. And that's probably not a good situation for either you or I to be in because I really want your senior year to set you up for success and I'd hate to put you in a class you don't want to be in and that's where you're stuck because we don't have space elsewhere. All right, two parts to this slide. All right, I'm gonna go over this slide and then I'm gonna end the recording of the presentation and then I'm gonna give an opportunity to ask questions if you have any, okay? So in your biology school course, your ABA is a quiz related to this presentation. You need to complete that for your ABA for today in that biology course, all right? So make sure you're doing that. Two, that one-stop shop of information is on your grade level Schoology page. So that 11th grade Schoology page has all the registration information. Remember, we have even more information um, on our EHS registration website. Your registration is only electronic, which means you need to input that digitally in the academic planner and press save. Your registration is due by the 17th at 4 p.m. Okay, the 17th at 4 p.m. That doesn't mean you have to wait till the 17th at 4 p.m. Please don't. You'll, you'll give me heart palpitations and I don't need that. You know, I'd love for students to start giving that in as they feel comfortable and ready. Be proactive. Have the conversations at home. Think about your future, how it aligns with it. If you need to work with your counselor, use that um, schedule meeting link on the Schoology page to access us. So right now I am going to